Hello Blazers, welcome to episode 95 of UAB Green and Told, original debut Monday, April 10th, 2023. Through this podcast, we're able to share stories from members of the UAB community. Take a listen back to past episodes at alumni.uab.edu slash greenandtold on Spotify or the Apple Podcast app. And while there, leave a written review so more alums can discover us. I'm Greg Berry, a UAB alum and director of communications in the Office of Alumni Affairs. Some would say there's nothing better than baseball. After all, it is America's pastime. The sport is the best. Since growing up in the Midwest, it's always been my sport. It's a game like none other, played with a bat, a ball, and gloves. For today's Green and Told guest, he's living the dream as an outfielder in the Kansas City Royals organization. As a two-sport athlete at UAB, Brewer Hicklin has always had star qualities, but as he'll share, it wasn't until after his first season of playing ball at UAB's Young Memorial Field that he discovered he had something special. And in the fall, I had some agents reaching out to me, what did you represent me? And I'm like, okay, this is a little weird. In 2017, Brewer became the highest drafted player the program had ever had. The anticipation off the charts, the waiting, making him nervous. Six come, then get picked, and then I'm like, oh gosh, you know, I got this big party planned on Saturday night because I knew I was getting picked that day. The Royals said they're going to pick me. They just didn't know when or where. Seemingly, baseball is all about calls. The call you get when selected by a major league team, the call to the bullpen to bring in a relief pitcher, and the call to join the big league team. For Brewer, that call came at the perfect time. It was almost a year to the date. I mean, I was in double A hitting 150 just at the bottom of my career, just feeling like I I had no chance. Charles Hicklin, or Brewer, is living out a fantasy many young boys can only dream about. As a professional baseball player, his goal of finding a spot in the Major League roster is within reach. But Brewer's days growing up in Huntsville weren't solely spent on the fresh-cut grass of a ball field. No, he was a well-rounded athlete, one who is always on the go. I was just a kid that wanted to constantly be on the go. And so I you know, was swimming in the summer, football in the fall, basketball in the winter, baseball in the spring. And I never really uh, focused on a specific sport other than just playing sports in general. And it wasn't until I got to high school that I narrowed down between uh, football and baseball. And I uh, made the baseball team, I think, when I was in eighth grade. And then uh, freshman, you know, started playing football in high school. And then sophomore year, I uh, played defense. And then junior, senior year, I played quarterback and defense. So sports have always kind of been the going factor for, for our family and especially for me and something that I would always enjoy doing. You obviously had talents. You you played two sports in college. When did you realize that you had something that was special? When I was little, I was never like the biggest, fastest, strongest, but I was always kind of at the, you know, one of the more athletic kids. And I think, um, you know, my parents were both athletes. So combined with that and also just my willingness and desire to, to work hard, and I never really uh, was – a sports specific player. I was always just an athlete playing that specific sport. I guess my second year of college that I realized, hey, uh, this could be for real. With that being said, I always had the dream and aspiration to play in the MLB and the NFL. To be able to, to live out the dream that I had when I was a kid is, is pretty surreal and honestly an incredible blessing. You're growing up in the early 2000s. Who were some of the idols, the guys that you were looking up to as quarterbacks, catchers? Because you mentioned those are two of the positions that you you kind of wanted to to be when you got into the pros. You know, I was a catcher primarily because it was involved in every play. I never played <laughs> in the outfield until I got to college. But I wanted to be a catcher because I kind of wanted to be the leader on the field and likewise being a quarterback. So uh, Chipper Jones was actually my favorite player, number 10. I wore number 10 really all the way through college. Unfortunately, in the Royal system, it's, it's uh, retired, but my dad was a Steelers fan, so Big Ben, I like to watch him, and obviously Tom Brady. But, um, yeah, it, it was just really, I just like to be kind of the, I don't want to say the centerpiece of the whole <laughs> the game, but I like to be involved, and I felt like that was where my skills were best suited, and uh, leadership, something that I've always kind of, I don't know, just something that uh, has been ingrained in me since I was a kid just kind of doing one step extra, just, you know, being 
uh, the leader that pulls people together. It's something that I've always enjoyed doing other than just playing sports. And so I love bringing people together. And that's something that both those positions just by the trade allowed me to do. And then I was able to kind of take it from there. When it came time to start looking at schools, what drew you to Birmingham? And was it a fact of you were going to be able to play two sports? I remember, you know, just talking with Coach Shoup and just hearing his morals, his beliefs, and um, just realizing that, you know, life is bigger than the game of baseball. And to me, that really resonated. I knew, um, you know, I was already involved in Church of the Highlands in Huntsville because they had a campus. So I had a church home, had some uh, small groups that I knew uh, were going to be down here. So really, I think um, the culmination of family, but also just my faith drawing me there. I actually got offered in July of going into my senior year, but I, I didn't want to accept on the spot because I wanted to see, you know, what football would have for my final season. <laughs> Ended up calling Coach Shoup a couple, I don't know, maybe six, seven weeks into the season. I, I had gotten some offers, but nothing nothing really came up. And uh, I decided I wanted to go to Birmingham and play at UAB. And uh, he actually didn't have a scholarship for me because he hadn't heard back from me. He gave that scholarship to somebody else. So uh, him being the man he is, he actually kept his word, uh, walked on my first year, and then earned the scholarship my second year. But, uh, yeah, that was an interesting kind of little tidbit with how I got to UAB. But uh, Coach Shoup was a big big part of that. You know, a lot of players, a lot of athletes, they want to play two sports. They want to continue their careers. But doing it at a Division I level isn't as easy as it probably is at D2, D3, or even high school, what were the challenges that you faced as you got onto campus and playing football, baseball? Not enough hours of the day. <laughs> the biggest challenge. Uh, yeah, you know, Coach Clark and Coach Shue both, they worked hand in hand together and trying to, you know, form my schedule that suited me, but also suited the season that I was in. So in the fall, obviously, I was primarily football. I still would go to Saturday. We'd have scrimmages on Saturday morning uh, with football, and then I'd go over and do scrimmages on Saturday afternoon. So, yeah, it was really just, uh, you know, not enough hours of the day to, to really, I guess, do what you want to do. But I was doing what I wanted to do, you know. Like, I, I was playing sports, and I was working hard, and uh, I test a lot of my athletic ability. And really, one of the reasons I feel like I am where I am today is – the development that I had just playing football and uh, just continuing to develop my athleticism, get stronger. I mean, I put on 15 pounds uh, that first summer that I was playing. So I really uh, felt like that helped me propel me uh, to get to where I am today and eventually into the MLB. How did you balance academics and, oh, yeah, by the way, you want to have a social life <laughs> playing two sports? I don't even know. I'm not. <laughs> it's been a while since I graduated, but I think like the – Magna cum laude or something. I don't even know how I got that. But uh, yeah, honestly, just a lot, a lot of hours. You know, a lot of the uh, teammates, you know, we, we were in similar classes and stuff. So we were able to, you know, to work together and bounce ideas off of one another. And then, uh, you know, all my professors were very flexible with my schedule. I kind of would always sit down with them before the semester started and just kind of walk them through uh, what I was doing. And at the time, I think I was probably one of the only athletes doing it at the school. And so, you know, they were they were kind of fascinated with it and they were all uh, supportive of that. And I can't say enough. I remember uh, one of my accounting professors, him and his wife worked there. And I mean, they were just so kind to me. And uh, I just, you know, I just remember them being so flexible. And if I ever needed to come in or miss a class, like they, you know, let me come in for office hours and, and walk me through it. So. Yeah, a lot of the teachers were very flexible, which helped help a ton. At what point during the baseball career at UAB did things really start clicking? Because your last couple of seasons, your stats were amazing. They were very, very solid. And and at that point, you're probably getting looks at by MLB scouts. Yeah, I, uh, after my freshman year, I, I still really didn't know anything about what that process was like. And in the fall, I had some agents reaching out to me wanting to represent me, and I'm like, okay, this is a little weird. And I uh, met with, you know, five or six agencies and ended up uh, going with the agent that I have now. And, um, you know, he just said, hey, look, go out there, play. Don't put any pressure on yourself. At that time, I was a redshirt sophomore, so I was draft eligible. And, uh, you know, I ended up having a pretty solid year. 
got hurt uh, halfway through the year. I fractured my wrist, but I only I think I missed maybe a couple games. I just kind of played through it. Um, performance, you know, kind of uh, dwindled a little bit. Didn't play as well as I wanted to, but I think uh, the scouts saw the athleticism that I was, you know, putting on the table. And not only that, not even really focusing on baseball and what I was able to do versus people that were doing it at the time. So, uh, you know, I still feel like I have room to grow. I still feel like I'm learning things about myself and my swing and the way that I play. But ultimately, I think uh, after that freshman year, you know, getting with the agents kind of started to set in and become a reality. How would you describe your playing style? I play baseball like I play football. <laughs> Hard-nosed, <laughs> aggressive. I leave no stone uh, turned. I, I really, um, you know, now that I, I'm 27, starting to catch up to me a little bit. My body doesn't quite recover uh, like it want, wants to. But, um, you know, I, I still, it doesn't change the way that I play. Like, one of these days, I'm not going to be able to play the game anymore. And when that day comes, I'll be able to look at myself and say, hey, you know, the days that I didn't feel like doing it, I did it. The days that I, I wanted to quit, I kept going. And, um, you know, that's something that I'm proud of, something that I continue to hope to do and, and, you know, whatever next adventure falls after baseball. When you were drafted by the Royals, you became UAB's highest drafted player ever. Take me through draft day and, and kind of that experience. What was it like? Oh, man, it was crazy. So I got a call. I knew I was going to go the second day, uh, which is what rounds three through ten. Um, I got a call early that morning from my agent said, hey, you're going to go either uh, it's like three or four. So three, four, five happened. I didn't get picked. And then um, six comes, didn't get picked. And then I'm like, oh, gosh, you know, I got this big party planned on Saturday night because I knew I was getting picked that day. <laughs> the Royals said they're going to pick me. They just didn't know when or where. And then seventh round comes. I got a call. I was like, oh, get picked right here. Boom, Brew Hickman, get picked. Seventh round. Highest draft pick up by the row of, uh, from UAB. And there you have it. <laughs> That had been cool for you and your family just to kind of experience that because not a lot of people get a chance to have that part of their lives. No, I, I've been so fortunate and blessed, you know, as I look back on really my last 10 years, you know, I had one of those Facebook memories pop up, you know, as me signing at, at, at Huntsville High, signing the UAB and just looking at all the support that I had. And then you go in and my signing to Kansas City and then you go through my minor leagues and. Um, you know, the success that I had and the favor that I had and just the support that continued to, to propel me forward. And then, you know, I look at my debut last year and um, having, I mean, 12 people just drop whatever they're doing and, and spend hundreds and, and if not thousands of dollars to come watch me play. You know, that's, it's, it's really um, special for me. It's something that I, I really value because a lot of people don't get to have those experiences in life. When you got into the minor leagues, what was the biggest difference between that and playing D1 baseball? The speed of the game, for sure. I think uh, mistakes get marginalized. A lot a lot less mistakes, uh, a lot quicker, have to respond and react quicker. The game doesn't really change. I mean, at the end of the day, like, I am playing a same game that I played when I was four years old uh, in Huntsville International League in Huntsville. So it's not that the game changes, it's just... The speed of the game changes and so you really just have to trust your preparation and just let your body take over you can't overthink things you can't um, overanalyze things by the time you've already done that it, it's too late i think it's one of the best games in life to play because you deal with failure 70 percent of the time and so uh, when you're going through those streaks of failure you have to look for different areas to add value to the team uh, whether it be on the base pass, whether it be really just being a teammate. And, um, you know, one of my mottos that I have is, is, you know, look to add value to other people and you find value in your own life. And so uh, when I feel like I'm uh, not adding much value as an athlete or as a baseball player, I try to try to add value in somebody else's life and just, you know, encouraging them because we're all going through this journey together. And that's something that, you know, we all need somebody to lean on and, and put our, head on their shoulder and when we're going through a tough time. And I just try to be that teammate for those, um, for those friends that I have on the team. When you Google Brewer Hicklin, you see a lot about leadership. What makes you a leader? Why, what really kind of gravitates you towards that role? I mean, I, I want people to uh, know that regardless of the circumstance, I have their back. 
and that I want the best for them, whether it's uh, my direct competitor or not. Um, you know, one of my best friends, um, he took my job last year, but it's like, it's okay. Like, you know, I want you to have the success at the end of the day. Like, you know, that's not enough. Then okay. But um, I can only control so much. So uh, I think that's really the foundation that I have and what I believe. Everybody looks at Major League Baseball and they see the, the glitz and glamour <laughs> of the bigs. What's the most surprising thing to you about minor league baseball that you didn't anticipate? I think minor league, I, I don't think people understand the grind. I, I really don't. I, I don't think they understand that we don't get paid any money. Uh, the schedules that we have are honestly horrible. I mean, they're better now than they were. We travel in six day uh, increments now, but I mean, I remember, you know, playing 21, 22 days in a row without a break. You know, I just don't think they understand, you know, what we have to go through. Not, not just that, but you got to realize that you're leaving for eight months out of the year, you know, you're leaving your family. And so uh, it's really difficult. You know, it really is an adjustment. It's something that you really can't do by yourself. You have to have support staff pushing you forward. And fortunately enough, I have an incredible family and an incredible wife and we make the most of it. And we all uh, understand, you know, that you only have such a short window to play this game and we're going to try to go all out to try to make it a reality. And I mean, I got some of the best friends and family that support me. We talked a little bit about you being drafted and, and what the emotions were like on draft day. Talk about the call you got when you got called up to the Royals at the end of last season. Yeah, it was it was an interesting day. You know, I, I feel like I had this vision of what it was going to be like. And your whole life, you dream of that moment. And I don't want to say this in, in any way that's like disrespectful to it, but it was very underwhelming because you work your whole life to achieve this. And then it's there and it's you're like, oh, man. Now what do I have to look forward to? Um, it took me the whole day to kind of digest what was going on. And, you know, I just remember uh, the first few thoughts that I had were like all the times that I wanted to quit and I kept pushing forward and I just was trying to like celebrate that. It was really cool to, to think, you know, man, all those times that I persevered, it, it really is worth it because man, there were some times that I looked in the mirror and I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. I, it was almost a year to the date. I mean, I was in double A hitting 150 just at the bottom of my career, just feeling like I, I had no chance. And then 12 months later, I'm a big leaguer. And so I think it just goes to show like, regardless of the season of life that you're in, like there's always light at the end of the tunnel. You just got to keep pushing. And so it was a celebration of that moment for me. Um, I didn't necessarily think about all the glorious and wonderful times that got me there. I really thought about the struggles and the pains that got me there because there's so many. Um, but yeah, I remember, you know, just stepping into the box and um, it wasn't that I wasn't nervous at all. I, I was, you know, I wasn't like, like overwhelmed nervous, but I just remember like standing there and I'm like, I'm really doing this, man. Like this is really happening. And um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy to think that that was almost a year ago. Pretty cool. You're about to start another season in the Kansas City organization. What are the expectations going into 2023? You know, 2023 for me is a big year. I'm 27. Uh, you know, I'm a little bit older. And so I feel like I'm in a good spot to be able to contribute. Um, we've got a lot of depth in the outfield, so I'm going to have to play well. I mean, at the end of the day, it all comes down to performance and I'm going to have to outperform some of my peers. And I'm OK with that. I mean, that doesn't bother me or make me shy away I mean I'm, I'm incredibly honored to be in the position that I am and to even be considered to play um, with, the, with the big league team so uh, for me I just I just want to be able to um, be consistent and you know each and every day they know what to expect that's my main goal and that's something that I can control and I'll just you know leave the rest the rest to God and let him kind of guide me in what, whatever way I need to go what would you consider a successful end to your career Nobody's ever asked me that. It's a good question. I think when I look back on my career, I hope people don't necessarily remember the plays or the home runs. I just hope they remember how I made them feel. And um, to me, relationships are what make life so sweet and special. And so I really, I know it may sound cliche, but um, I just want people to know that like I love them and I want what's best for them. 
and um, the relationships that I've built, built and the cultures that I've been around throughout my career as a baseball player have really molded me into who I am today. I mean, I've learned so much from the Latino culture and uh, just being with those guys is really special. So uh, I enjoy um, just meeting people and you meet people from all over the United States and all over the world. So that to me is something that I'll take from it. And then hopefully on the flip side, people will, um, you know, understand that I was really genuine in, in the way that I cared about them and, and wanted what's best for them. That's Brewer Hicklin. Brewer earned his Bachelor of Science degree from the Class School of Business in 2017, finishing it up months after being drafted by the Kansas City Royals. Today, he's an outfielder in the organization with big league aspirations. And as a former UAB standout, Brewer definitely has a great idea of what it means to be a Blazer. To me, a Blazer is somebody that is present, is just taking advantage of where their feet are for that day, um, making the most of the opportunity presented to them uh, for that specific day. You know, each day looked different for me uh, when I in my time at UAB. Some days it was on the football field, some days it was on the diamond. Uh, but one thing remained steadfast, and that was me looking for new relationships and building uh, a culture around the team. And so uh, I just always try to embrace the present and just be where my feet are. And to me, my time at UAB, um, I can, you know, I feel like I can say with confidence that that's what I did. I just, uh, I didn't have time to look forward. I didn't have time to look back. I just had to be where I was because I didn't have time to, to think about anything other than what was happening right then and there. Um, and so that was, that was to me kind of my time and how really it molded me into, to, you know, the kind of athlete and player and person I am today. Be sure to check out past episodes of the UAB Green and Told podcast. Listen in at alumni.uab.edu slash green and told. Have a story to share or know someone who does? Email greenandtold at uab.edu. Finally, be sure to follow us on social media. Just search UAB Alumni on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for listening, and until next time, go Blazers!